Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, our next uh, speaker is Dr. Darren Privet. Dr. Privet is an emergency medicine physician and the base hospital director and pediatric director at Henry Mayo Newhall Memorial Hospital. Doctor? Good evening, everybody. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is Dr. Privet. I'm uh, really excited for this opportunity to talk to you tonight. Uh, my wife grew up in this valley. She went to Canyon High School. And uh, when we started having small children in New York City, we knew that we wanted to return to Santa Cruz Valley to raise our family. We've been back here approximately four years now. Um, so I'm really excited to be here tonight, uh, to be here with you. And it actually is very inspiring to see how many people are here tonight. I was not really expecting this many people. Uh, so I appreciate that you're taking the initiative to be here tonight to bring awareness and to educate and hopefully make a difference in your family, within your friends, and within your own neighborhoods. We all have a great and sacred responsibility to make a difference in young people's lives. I've been asked to speak on some specific things tonight. And with emergency medicine, it's a very visual uh, medicine. So if you can picture with me a patient who might have injected, uh, snorted, or smoked uh, heroin. The biggest concern we worry about these drugs is that it suppresses the respiratory tree. It inhibits your ability to breathe if the doses are toxic enough. If you can visualize taking a goldfish out of a fish tank and lying it on the ground and sitting there watch it suffer as it gasps and gulps for air. If you take a strong enough dose, if it's potent enough, this is exactly kind of what it does. It suppresses your ability to breathe. The reason why I think with young people and they don't seek assistance as fast as they should is I think majority of them think that they're just high. Like when they drink alcohol, well, he's just drunk. They don't really realize that this particular individual is not breathing or is in distress and needs help until it's too late. Majority of the patients who present to the emergency room at Henry Mayo are by the EMS system, by those who were aware enough to call 911. Usually when they come in, just the same picture, this goldfish sitting there, breathing only one, two, three, four breaths per minute. Normally, we breathe about 16 to 20 breaths per minute. So you can imagine someone who's only breathing two to four breaths per minute. Consider the amount of oxygen that they potentially are not getting to their brain, to their vital organs. Luckily, by the time the paramedics get to them and to when they get to the emergency room, we do have an antidote that we can give them that can rapidly reverse the effects of the drug. The concerning part is if the toxic effects of the drug is reversed, the concerning point is how much it affected their brain. Majority of these patients, if they overdose has not killed them, the effects of the overdose eventually can disable them and affect them for the rest of their life. Now, the, the data looking back at the medical records, we've had approximately 413 cases of drug overdoses in the past two years. That's almost one every other day. Looking at the cardiac events that we've had, it's almost the same amount of heart attacks that we've had in the past two years, which is scary. For the majority of us, even though with education, with medications that we have, sometimes cardiac d disease is unpreventable. Drug overdoses are preventable. So directly related to the individual. Of those 413 cases, 108 patients are less than 24 years old. So it is significantly affecting the young population, which is very concerning. What's more concerning than that, specifically with heroin, is that it's, it's very, very concerning the significant amount of Santa Clarita citizens who are on narcotic prescriptions. Well, we're not talking just one narcotic prescription, multiple narcotic prescriptions and benzodiazepines. So much so that we've actually had to create a no narcotic list at the hospital for so many patients who come to the emergency room drug seeking. Unfortunately, for the most part, patient satisfaction has a lot to do with how happy people are 
And unfortunately, if people can say the right thing, sometimes we're bound legally to prescribe them medications. Luckily, on the federal level, the state level, and the local level, with other health professionals and pharmacies, we've been able to access a DEA, a DEA drug site where we can uh, access a patient's medical history and determine how many narcotics they've been prescribed, which I think is a direct relation to decreasing the effects of drug overdose in the Valley. Now we've talked already some pictures here of what happens when family members have to deal with the effects that drug overdose can have on them. The same is true for me, how difficult it is for me to walk into a room to tell a loved one, a family member, that their special one has died from a drug overdose. It's extremely difficult. It's something that you don't want to experience. I recall about a year and a half ago, I had twins, brothers, who were partying for the younger brother's birthday. The older brother was a heroin addict, addict. And according to the parents, the younger one had never done drugs before. But because it was his 21st birthday, decided to try it because he trusted his big brother. Both of them came in breathing about two to four breaths per minute. We were able to save the older brother who was an addict, and unfortunately the younger brother died. Devastating. We all have a responsibility, and I hope that we can further increase our education and our awareness and take that back to who we're involved with, who we're associated with, and make a difference in their life. Thanks.